So we go over here uh, with our Seahawks and we're going into the second week of free agency here. Uh, not a ton going on per se, but it's still veterans going into positions of need for Seattle. On the 18th of March, last Monday, the team signed offensive guard Tremaine uh, Ankrum Jr. Ankrum Jr. is actually friends with Mariners outfielder Taylor Trammell, both of them coming from Powder Springs, Georgia, which is cool to see. It's always nice to see um, the sort of connections within the city between the athletes. There would have been that with Jackson Smith and Jigba and Kanan Smith and Jigba, but Kanan got put on waivers and was claimed by the Pirates, the team that uh, the Mariners claimed him from. So, uh, Ingram's interesting when you look at him. He's not necessarily, he doesn't jump out at you as a big signing or anybody who might be penciled in to uh, begin the year at the offensive guard position. You know, with Seattle losing some of their interior linemen, Evan Brown, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Damian Lewis leaving last week to join the Panthers. You know, Seattle's going to need to shore up that interior offensive line, and they probably would have done that anyway uh, had those contracts not gone up considering the lack of solid play from the interior offensive line. You look at Ankrum Jr. here. He was selected by the Rams as a seventh rounder back in 2020. Um, he was part of the Super Bowl team that they had in 2021. As though some injuries, he was placed on injury reserve before that Super Bowl. Uh, the next year, around the same time, he was placed on injury reserve with a fractured fibula in week two. So it doesn't really seem like he's gotten a ton of traction. Came out of Clemson, won. He's a winner. I mean, he won the Super Bowl in 21 with the Rams, two CFP national championships with Clemson in 2026. 26. I'm getting ahead of myself. 2016 and 2018. Uh, yeah, his father, he does have an athletic background. His father played basketball for USC from 1992 to 1996. So there's that athletic background, kind of what the old sort of regime with Pete Carroll liked with the athletic offensive lineman. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Ankrum Jr. here kind of like slots right into the lineup has to fight for his spot or if Seattle makes a move uh, of some sort, whether it's drafting somebody or signing another interior offensive lineman uh, to help shore up uh, those three positions of need within the interior line at the guard positions and the center position. On the same day, there was a report that the Seahawks had shown preliminary interest in pass rusher Randy Gregory. He does have a history with Seattle Seahawks defensive coordinator Aiden Dirt, who came over this past offseason from the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, it is preliminary. It likely would be a very short-term deal, kind of a prove-it deal sort of thing, even though Gregory has been around for a good amount of time and has shown flashes in the different stops that he's made around the league. Um, but it's interesting to see, especially considering, you know, you want guys who are able to rush the passer. passer. Seattle hasn't been able to consistently do that for quite some time. The next day on the 19th, the team did sign defensive back Kayvon Wallace to a one-year deal um, and defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins. So, again, like I talked about with Ingram Jr., not necessarily the flashiest signings in the world for Seattle here, but they do go to positions of need for the team. Uh, you know, with Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs out. Yes, the team had Julian Love. Yes, the team uh, did bring in Rayshon Jenkins last week. But, you know, you're wanting to add veterans. You're wanting to add competition. And at least looking uh, here with when we go over here to Wallace, it was funny. Mike McDonald uh, on the radio show this past week said that the team didn't believe they could get both Wallace and Jenkins this offseason. So they like that they do that. They like that these two can bring competition, and it gives them some options uh, from what he said about what they can do at the safety position. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, but it's, it, you know, they don't necessarily show the most on, on film when you look at it, uh, when you look at Wallace uh, and a guy like Jenkins as well. But, you know, uh, put him in Mike McDonald's defense and that scheme, and maybe it's a, it's a second win for guys like this. So I know Kayvon Wallace was excited to come here. There are reports that he's going to wear the number 24. Obviously, with the history of that number here in Seattle, I don't know uh, how well that goes over, but we'll see. Uh, we're looking at uh, Jonathan Hankins here. He's also on a one-year deal. It's a $2.05 million deal with $300,000 guaranteed. He gets a uh, $300,000 signing bonus. Talking about those because, uh, you know, something that comes into play here with these free agents goes the compensatory picks that the teams get whether they're losing free agents or depending on if they sign guys like this um, they don't get those picks so Seattle right now has a fourth round and a fifth round compensatory pick in the 2025 draft um, 
possibly another coming depending on what Evan Brown's deal is. We'll look at that with departures, but you're looking at that sort of thing right now, losing Damian Lewis, that's you a fourth, and Jordan Brooks, that's you a fifth as of this moment in the 2025 draft. Uh, Hankins, sorry, I got away from him there. Hankins has bounced around a little bit. He was uh, drafted by the Giants coming out of the draft a few years ago. He's been around the league. He was with the Raiders recently. He's been with the Cowboys. Um, he's age 31 right now. Yeah, bounced around, started with the Giants, went to the Colts, uh, went to the Raiders with the Cowboys, and now is with Seattle here. You know, when you they had to cut Brian Monet earlier this offseason to, to free up some cap space and, and even still – you know, your Seattle really hasn't had a consistent nose slash D tackle uh, pairing in a while, whether that be to injuries or to who they've got. You know, Jerron Reed played well this past year. So you're really looking to shore up the middle of that defensive line as well, just like we talked about with the interior line. Uh, and you're hoping that Hankins can do that, a proven veteran, a guy that, uh, you know, the Cowboys wanted to bring back, but Seattle reportedly uh, offered him more money. And so he comes here to play for Mike McDonald's defense. Uh, we look over here to the players that the team lost via free agency, and we've talked a little bit already about Evan Brown. So we talked about it last week with likely him not coming back that ends up being true as he ends up going to the Arizona Cardinals so another player from Seattle going to an in-division rival and the same team with Arizona both DJ Dallas and Evan Brown going to the Cardinals uh, and so Seattle will be in the market for a center unless you look at Olu Oluwatimi or some of the other options or maybe they draft it's all possible here um or nick harris you know that they signed last week and then the other player this past week that they lost via free agency was defensive lineman mario edwards jr he heads to the texans he was in a very limited role uh with seattle this past season you really didn't see him that much get that much playing time uh instead he decides to leave uh seattle and go to a houston team that really could be a, a solid contender here in this upcoming year and then the years going forward just considering the sort of juice that this team has brought with that coaching staff with cj stroud um having will anderson drafted in the same the same few picks as well so um interesting to see that but um you know it's i don't know if they're the biggest losses for seattle to deal with quite yet so uh, that will close us out with Seahawks related news. Not a ton going on. You know, there's the few signings there. And again, veterans at positions of need. That's what's important to look at. It is somewhat notable, though, to look at the Seahawks team and know that they are they have. I believe it's only three players that are not on rookie contracts that have deals that go to 2025 or past it. It very much could mean a few things that Seattle is wanting to keep things light in case they want to make a major turnaround within the next few years. Uh, you know, maybe the new regime wants to keep it that way so that they can see and evaluate, or it's just how things worked out. So 